Good morning. I'm here. I made it. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Now, uh, I had a terrible virus. I was in the emergency ward for a day and a half. And I'm not going to go into all the details because I'm alive. I'm still here. <laughs> taking a little ibuprofen. And I hate taking pills. I never take pills. But sometimes you have to. I'm more myself. I'm getting around. I spent like three or four days in the recliner not wanting to move day or night, not wanting to eat everything. So I've survived and I'm back. And during that time, you know, what do you do when you have the flu <laughs> and your organs need watering and you look at them, you know, like I should have counted them. There's over 30, I know, not counting house plants, and they all usually get watered on Wednesday. And I knew I couldn't wait because it was Wednesday and I thought, okay, okay, um, I think what I'll do is I'll do it as quick as I can. And, and I, it was my day when I, if you have my watering schedule or you want my watering schedule, I'll print it out in the descript, in the uh, comment, not the comments, in the... Uh, under this video, in, in the description. I'll try and print it out so you can copy it. So I was supposed to do my, I had a quarter teaspoon of Kelly Magic to a gallon of water and a quarter teaspoon uh, of uh, Epsom salts to a gallon of water. So in, in my sink, which takes about four gallons, I usually put a teaspoon. So I just kind of bury it. My watering for all my days are quite light on things like that. But, uh, so what did I do? Well, I said, okay, you're getting the quickest watering possible and nothing fussy. So I had it all done in an hour. <laughs> I just took them to the sink or the shower, put as many in the shower as I could and I hosed them down two or three times to make sure they were soaked through, let them drain and put them back. I was done in an hour, all of them, and then went back to my recliner. So it is possible to have a lot of orchids and you know, I couldn't forget about them but I did. It takes a little longer when I wipe the leaves and I, this was a no check, no fuss, just water. And they knew it. <laughs> so, but uh, I think almost all of them are coming in spikes. Some of the spikes are bigger, some are smaller. They're all doing good. So they got their really good care in spring. They got um, lots of light. They got... Uh, high nitrogen fertilizer which they need. They need lots of sun to grow healthy and strong and they need lots of nitrogen during this growing period. And we don't want to forget about the other numbers. Nitrogen being the first, it's also important to have a high number <clears throat> for your last number. And so uh, that was important and uh, so I know they got good care because they're doing well. And also what happens is, um, I went to the American Orchid Society uh, about healthy blooms and whether you should change your fertilizer at this time of year. And um, <clears throat> you want to have healthy blooms from winter to spring. Now this fertilizer is not going to make them spike. That's not what it's for. You've done all your preparation. They had a couple weeks of cold. Now, if you're in a uh, situation where you have air conditioner and your house is always the same temperature, it's a little bit harder to get that cool down. And you could have them in a special room where the air conditioner doesn't reach open a window, 
whatever you have to do, but they need light still during this time, but they need a week or two with a 10 to 15 degree drop in temperature. And also at this time of year, our amount of light is um, diminishing. So that's also sending signals. So those are the two signals that are saying, hey, it's time to start thinking about spiking. Now our weather's been strange. We have frost on the roofs and blue skies. It's beautiful. We probably had the dream summer, uh, very nice, and the dream fall, but no water, which is important. So we're still, they're, they're saying we're going to get rain, but it never seems to show up here. So we're still hoping we get rain. So anyway, we did all our preparations, which I covered in another video in the early part of the year for spring. I'll put a link under this video also. Um, so those are the things that are telling your orchids to spike. Not that fertilizer. The change in fertilizer usually ha happens around Halloween. Now, my orchids are spiking a week early because we did have cold nights. Even though our days have been 80 and 90 degrees, we've had cold nights. So, um, so now you're, you're going to start assessing them and watching for your spikes. And do you want to change your fertilizer? I say yes. And why do you want to change it? Because you want, when your orchids are spiking, you want to have very healthy orchid flowers and as many as you can get. Now, uh, some of that may depend on the age of your orchid. <clears throat> the longer you have your orchid, you're more likely to get branching, more flowers. We have to be patient. They're slow growers and they will uh, reward us with beautiful blooms as they mature. So the other thing you really want to do, and this is something I work on continually and noticed lots over the years, you want as many leaves as you can get. <laughs> now lots of times you'll read online that uh, oh um that your orchids grown in the home will never have more than five leaves. You read things like that on there. <clears throat> if you get four leaves, you're lucky. I say you want to get as many leaves as possible. Now, if you start to lose more than one leaf at a time on those lower leaves are going yellow and you're losing more than one, then you could consider a, a low dose of Epsom salts and water, which just might help them out. Now mine get this in my watering schedule regularly. Mine orchids only get two days of the six watering weeks in my schedule before I start doing the whole thing over again are bought fertilizer. So um, I am learning over time that some fertilizers are definitely better than the others. And as, I, as you know, in another video I talked about, I asked for help and I found somebody in Canada to help me out. And I ordered from Clouds Orchid some MSM fertilizer. I have noticed a big difference using that for the nitrogen, but also the high glass number. So, Yes, I think there is a difference in fertilizer, but I don't think you need to be using those bot fertilizers all the time, every watering day. I like to switch out with other things that supply more natural, more something what they're used to in their own environment. And I think the more we can try and keep them similar to their own environment that uh, we're getting somewhere. So. You want to encourage lots of leaves. Lots of leaves, lots of roots, healthy plant. Those are the signs of a healthy plant. 
And uh, we, I know we all fall for a new orchid, and I'm being good. You know, I, I'm sorry this channel isn't about always buying a new orchid and opening it because uh, maybe my age. <laughs> so I like to uh, keep the ones that I've got healthy. I learn a lot about them. I've been growing them for since 2011 or 10 or something. And this is just what I've learned in my house. So uh, if you are seeing too much loss of leaves, I would consider adding a little Epsom salt, which I do, and my uh, orchids have done well. So I don't mind answering any questions you send me about the orchids. I'm glad to help you. You can email me at carolynsorchidfriends at gmail.com. So in our northern climate, we're really noticing the darkness coming. Try to make sure your orchids are getting about 14 hours of light a day. They can grow in any window north, west, south, east. You just have to know how to uh, adjust those windows. I'm loving my north windows. They get lots of light because they're greenhouse windows, so they're going out and they're absorbing light from different areas, but no direct sun. They've all done well in the northern windows. And now we are making sure, as soon as it starts to get dark, I turn my lights on, my grow lights, in all my windows to make sure they're getting at least 14 hours of light a day. And, and then they need darkness for their nap. So, uh, our northern climates, that's an important thing to think about at this time of year. When you're changing your fertilizer to a high middle number, <laughs> and I'll show you mine in a minute. Now, the other thing you want to consider is a fan. Fans have made a big difference. It doesn't matter if they're small or big. I have the ceiling fans here and in the living room and that's all I use it makes a big difference and they actually share their air movement all around so it's good for us it's good for your breathing it's good for keeping a high oxygen level in your room it's not just good for them so you know put those fans on and use them and orchids are 90% water so this is all from the American Orchid Society and they don't need an over amount of water. They like to be watered. They like to, I have found, they like to just come to that drying stage before they're watered and again. So it's up to you to check those pots regularly when you first put one in to make sure you know when the watering time is right for you and for the pots you're using. Because I think I have found with the bark, and most of mine are in just bark. Uh, I, I agree with adding lava rock, all this other stuff, but I just ended up going to straight bark. So um, I liked my larger bark, I can't get right now, but uh, they're staying moister a little longer with the thinner bark naturally. So anyway, so now because we're heading into the spikes are up, we want good healthy flowers and this is what I switched to. I bought this in line, online. If you can't find this one, it doesn't matter. This is 1931-17. So the other numbers are still very helpful for a healthy orchid, but that high middle number is going to help those spikes become healthy and have good budding success. You don't want to lose them because they haven't got enough energy to do the, what they came here to do. So. <clears throat> That is that with the fertilizer, and um, 
I'm just going to turn the camera around the other direction. I want to talk about uh, the north windows and, and then we'll talk about my west windows and what I do differently for each of them. So, oh, and this, things are so beautiful in here. We, we are enjoying this on our counter. It was so simple and easy. And I just take this little mister and, and I miss. And I make sure I give Corella Lecticella a little extra. But everything is very good in there. So now I've just missed it if I want. I can just leave that door open for a while. So we're just going to turn you around. Maybe we'll go over here. Easier. I don't know what you're seeing. <laughs> but we'll get there. I'm not the best camera operator. Let's see what we got. Yeah, we got sunshine out there. We know that. That's a good thing. It's just beautiful, but cold, but cold. So anyway, these are the north garden windows I had put in. So they have glass on the top and on the sides and on the back. And that is probably getting a lot more light than a north window with just a windowsill and um, what happens is these I never crank the windows when I brought them in from the patio for two weeks of cold because they actually do get colder at night when it's colder because they're just in all that glass not real cold because they're new type of stuff they use in it doesn't really let a lot of cold in. I can put my hand in here and it doesn't feel cold and it's close to freezing outside. There's frost everywhere, <laughs> steaming off of the roofs as the sun comes up. But uh, some of these plants, like uh, Georgia Pearl, they've been in this window since I got them. And she got switched from moss to bark. All her leaves are growing good. She's doing good. She's got good roots. And uh, I'm still getting spikes here. This one here is a beautiful spike coming out. And they all do. <laughs> Except this one. There is the odd one that maybe flowered late or wasn't healthy. I'm still looking after. We all have those. Because we all know some of our orchids uh, are not as healthy as others, just like people. There, there's no difference. It might be just one that needs special care. Or you haven't found that right situation for it yet. <clears throat> so, this is the north window. And the only thing I do different here is I don't crowd them because I don't want so many orchids I have to crowd them. And also I like a little ambience and I like playing with knickknacks. <laughs> so um, the main thing is these are just cheap grow lights that attach to each other. They were small ones. And we just did down the one side, going this way. So they go on at night. That's what we, we are just making sure they get extra light. All summer, even during our hottest, longest summer, we've had no rain since the beginning of July. Um, they were fine. North windows are good. Don't be afraid because they can't have an orchid because you have a north window. All you have to do is set that north window up to be just right by more light too. So, yeah, and then over here, oh, do you see any little crystal candles on my table? <laughs> we were at a garage sale, naturally. Oh, it was the thrift store, sorry. And they had these, they got some places where things are just cheap, hardly over $2. Well, there was two of these for $2. 
They're solid crystal. They're really heavy. And why? Because there's a tiny chip on the corner right here. And this one sold somewhere. Someone had them and they bind them together when they put them real close on the table and they checked a couple corners. So they get marked down to $2. But then there's people like me that really don't notice that chip. Hey, we all got chips. Nothing's perfect in this life. And I enjoy the beauty of what it is, so it works for me. <laughs> okay, now over here, we got beautiful sun coming in here. Beautiful. I got pumpkins to cook out there, but I'm trying to slow down a bit. You know me, sometimes life tells you, slow down, Caroline. You know I'm running around doing six things at once and think I can keep doing that. And I've had some advice from some good friends and very good advice. Slow down, Caroline. <laughs> very good advice. So um, this window is the same, and we put the light on this side, going this way. And look at the growth in these orchids. I mean, this one is just, it has a spike, it's loaded with roots. So almost all of them are in spike. And even these plants are doing good by a north window. And I just put this little one, I'm hoping it, when it gets tall, it'll fall over and start growing around here. So, okay, now we're headed to the west windows. <coughs> okay. Okay. Holy smokes, the barometer is going up like crazy. Huh, I like keeping a watch on the barometer. Let's see if we can come a little bit closer here. There we go. Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> okay, um, this window, the west window, this, if you have a west window, it's perfectly fine. But what you want if you have a west window is curtains that you can bring down on the great close to the glass. You want sheer curtains or blinds because when it's the hot part of the summer day and evening, they, it's too hot for them. Now this whole bay window is perfectly good all year round because it has the curtain back here. So if I have all those curtains down, I also have a curtain here. Oh, they're just blinds, you know, one inch mini blinds. I can put down, and these misters are on, everything that's in there gets a humidity bath on a hot day. Now they get used to the temperature change because we don't have air conditioner, so as the heat rises outside, it rises in here, and they get quite used to that in the summer. So um, they are definitely feeling the difference because we are in the house too. We're not walking around, it's 90 degrees in the house anymore. They know. So, and, and here, by the bay window, we just put a little glass shelf, just a couple of those little things that, just a piece of wood comes up and out, who knows what, shelf holder, any type of shelf holder. We put three and put two glass shelves on them. And then before I put those blinds up, I could bring them out here and pull this blind down. So because you have a west window doesn't mean you can't grow orchids. This is, I started with a west window. So it's all, all perfectly good. And most of these are in spikes, and I did crack these windows for two weeks. Just a crack, not so much when the nights were very cold, that we were freezing, but enough to let them know, hey, it is cooler. Uh, I, they don't, and make sure this time of the year, your orchid's leaves are not on the glass. Now, you know, this one has one, two... Three, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight leaves that I get nine, nine leaves. And some I have broken leaves, some have spelled off. This one's got your classic four, but it had lost a leaf. And I took that one off, finally it got broken in an accident. And it's still growing new leaves, I see another leaf coming. And I also see a spike coming, so, uh, yeah. So I try to keep lots of leaves and encourage lots of leaves. So um, we're doing pretty good on that. Every once in a while there's always those that want to break that rule. Huh? So, uh, that's this, and now we're going to head into the last window. Just for fun. Just for fun. Yeah. I'll back up, I think. Yeah, it might be a bit. I'm carrying my long tripod, so I have to be careful how I do this. Okay. Okay. Whoops, whoops, whoops. There we go. So this is my other west window that does not have a curtain because the bay window has a top roof. Um, but this one is glass and I couldn't figure out how to hang. I didn't know how to hang a curtain. So that's why I switched to a few cactus. The cactus are doing well. Even the ones down here, succulents, I just leave them all, all year. Even with the sun rate on, <laughs> they seem to be fine. So um, I moved my fern in here and set up a mister here and here so that everything can get misted because, like I say, we've been very dry. So um, that's the one thing, and that's the difference between these two west windows. And it's only a curtain, but I kind of like it that way. I can still pull this one down for us when it's hot, and they don't seem to mind. Most of them have been in here a long time, growing and growing. So, <laughs> and my little spider fern seems to be healthy, and everything seems to be going well. The um, Chinese money plant has for some reason I moved it around. That's what I mean. Sometimes you move things around and you find some position, some different twig, and things seem to do real good. So I'm going to show you. I'll bring her out. Well, all of a sudden when I put her in this corner, look at this. She's growing good. She was just a baby last year and she's doing real good. So, <laughs> yeah, if one's not doing good, move them around. And in the fall, my rabbit's foot fern, it struggles because it's, a cha it's not living in its best climate. So here it gets a little more sun and I can give it humidity. And Alfinia, tiny little Alfinia, our little miracle plant that even got only one watering day was when, look at this, she's amazing. So even if you have only room for a tiny orchid, she's amazing. She just keeps blooming and blooming and did from right after I bought her. And she was a free gift from Roehampton Orchids. Uh, came with the other Shariana that I ordered. So it was a nice surprise that keeps on giving and giving. So I did, just before we go, now, I did do a painting. I, my daughter sent me a picture of a fishing trip her and her partner went on. And um, her picture was in one picture and his was in another. And I thought, oh, they look so happy. They look so healthy. I wanted to paint them, but I wanted them together. And I've never painted real people before. I mean, not people I know. It was so hard. I almost threw it out. It's still not good, but I'm hanging in there and I keep touching it up a bit. So I'm going to let you see it. <laughs> I was going to give it as a gift, but I think it's going to end up 
hanging in a garage. <laughs> okay, now let's see. I'll show you from here. You get to view the beautiful sunshine and the Roth moss. Okay, there we go. That should help. Now, I'm not doing a close up. This is where we're going. <laughs> there we go. So, this is Rosemary and this is Mike. And they did catch, these are their fish I painted. He had this beautiful sockeye in the Fraser River. And that's the Fraser River just outside of Kamloops. And th these are their fish. They were allowed four. And there was one beauty and some here already caught. And they look so happy. But the, the, I'm not very good at portrait style. But I'm still working on it so I hated to, to wreck it. So thanks for joining me. Sorry I'm not there more often. I do what I can when I can. And love you all. And appreciate your comments so much. Bye for now.